Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rabb. So the United States is $22 trillion in debt, which is an unbelievable, almost unfathomable amount of debt that we are in. And there's just, oh, it's crazy. But it doesn't get nearly the publicity, nearly the attention that I think it should. And the reason for that is because most Americans don't see how this debt affects them personally. And they can't get emotionally involved with it. And they don't quite see the issue oftentimes with having that much debt. But in this video, that's what I'm gonna tackle. I'm gonna go over seven different ways that this amount of debt affects the average American. So in this video, you are gonna see me go full economic student mode, and it's gonna be a lot of fun, and I think these are gonna be really, really important points for you to know, to understand the power the debt is having on the US economy, and how it could drastically affect your life in the not too distant future. So let's jump into this unbelievably important topic. And of course, if you're new here, my name's Calvin Rabb here I make videos all about personal finance so if you're interested in anything like that I would love it if you would subscribe. The first way that you are affected is when there's this much debt interest rates go up. Now why do they go up? Well there's different reasons. The first one is that when the US wants to start paying off their debt and putting money towards their debt the way they do this is through treasury securities. So you guys may know these as bonds and bills and different things like that. So in order to pay off this amount amount of debt, the US government has to go and issue more of these. And this is the basic economic principle of when supply goes up, so supply of these bonds and bills and treasury securities, then the price is going to go down and they won't be as high in demand. So in order to push that demand back up, the US is going to have to add higher interest rates on these treasury securities. And interest rates on these treasury securities are very much so linked with the federal interest rate. So that's one way that it gets hiked up. Plus, once they kind of lose their demand, lose their value, and the debt keeps climbing and climbing and climbing, people see it as being more of a risk. So in order to push demand on security, so people actually want to buy them, the interest rate's going to go up. Because it's seen as being more riskier, you want to have a little bit higher of an interest rate to kind of weigh out that risk. So the first way that this affects you is the interest rates go up. And this is kind of that first domino that affects everything else. The second way that you are affected by this amount of debt is that it's going to slow the economy down. And this is going to affect you mainly in two ways. Firstly, stocks are going to fall. And secondly, the job market will be a lot tougher to get a job in. So how does this happen? How is the economy going to slow down? Well, it's important to know that one of the major fundings for the economy is through something known as corporate bonds. And corporate bonds are essentially bonds that are released by a corporation so they can gather money to put money into their business business to grow their business and then in return you will get an interest rate for buying that bond. But when the treasury securities interest rates go up, less people want to buy these corporate bonds. So in order to push demand on these corporate bonds, these businesses are then going to have to raise their interest rate. And in order to pay off that interest rate and to keep it a safe and guaranteed investment, these businesses are going to have to take more money out of their business to pay off these high interest rates. So what happens then is more money is going into paying for these corporate bonds and less is going into their business, which in return slows down the economy. So once the businesses stop getting as much funding as they normally would, they slow down, the economy shrinks a little bit, and it just kind of takes a hit. Now this could be a big reason that the next recession kind of occurs, and it could be because of our just mounting debt that we have. The third way that you are affected is that prices go up. Now, which price prices am I talking about? Which sector? Well, really every sector. And the reason for that is because now that these corporate bonds have a higher interest rate, businesses have to take more money from their personal company and put it into paying off these interest rates that people buy. The way they do that is they're going to have to make more money if they want to still stay afloat and not change their balance sheet so much. So the way they're going to collect more money is by raising their prices. And what happens is this whole kind of issue is then pushed to the consumer, which is us. We're now paying more because the business is, is now having to pay more. So they just kind of 
push this extra amount of money onto the consumer. So we end up get kind of getting this kind of the short end of this whole issue. Number four is higher taxes. Now this is one you may have guessed and the reason for higher taxes is just because once the debt gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's seen as being a riskier investment to invest in this debt. So people that hold on to US debt are going to want more money. They're going to want more money coming in because it's seen as a riskier investment now. So once these kind of debt payments go up, it's seen as more of a riskier investment. The United States is going to have to pour more of their money into paying off this debt, or at least the debt payments and different interest rates and different things like that. So when the US government needs money, how do they get it? That's right, you pay it. You pay it through your taxes. So in the end, this again is passed on to the consumer. So this is something that you will see. You'll see your taxes go up. And the reason for that is because we now got to pay off some of this debt that a lot of people are now wanting to have paid because it's seen as being a riskier investment. The fifth way that you will be affected personally from this debt is that home values will actually drop. Now, the reason for this is because the Treasury Securities interest rates will go up, the Fed will have to up their interest rate, and when that happens, it's going to be harder for a lot of people to get a loan because now that the interest rate is up, you're going to have to be paying a lot more in these interest rates if you're going to go take out a mortgage or something like that. So a lot more people won't qualify to buy these houses. Now, one of the things that will change in order to get you approved for a lot of these loans is that the price has to drop. You can't really mess too much with the interest rate, so the price of the house will have to drop. And I think that is what we'll see a lot of is housing prices start to fall so more people can get approved for loans. Now, although this may seem like a good thing, you know, oh man, houses are so expensive right now. I can't wait to see them drop a little bit. Yeah, that sounds good in theory, but you have to remember that millions of people have their personal net worth and a majority of their personal net worth in the equity that they have in their house. So if their house goes down in value even 5%, then these individuals lose almost 5% of their personal net worth. And once you think about that on a grand scale of millions of people losing 5% of their net worth in a short amount of time, it is rather startling. And what seemed like a good thing, cheaper houses, you start to see how it's not such a good thing thing on a huge macro scale. So that is number five, cheaper houses will be another thing that you will see as a direct link to this huge amount of debt. Number six, and I wasn't sure what to title this one, so we're calling it Helpful Services Deteriorate. And the reason for this is, again, because the government is now having to put more time, more money into paying off this debt, the opportunity cost of that is putting that money and taking it away from other places where that money could go. So so there's a lot of public services out there that you guys know of that won't get as much funding. And the reason for that is because the funding that would have gone to that is now going to paying off this debt. So a lot of the public services that we do see that are funded by the government, the federal government, will then take a hit and won't be funded as well. And the service itself, because it isn't funded as well, will start to deteriorate in that way because the money is now being averted and going elsewhere. Number seven. And the last way that I'm going to be talking about today that this debt affects you is that the value of the dollar will decrease. And the reason for this is because there's a direct link between the bonds that a certain country has and the value of their dollar. It really goes hand in hand. So if you study countries where their kind of federal bonds or treasury securities like we have go up, then the strength of their personal currency will go up as well. However, as I talked about in and number one, because we're issuing more of these treasury bonds, the supply is larger, they get cheaper and fall in value, they fall in demand, then we have to remember that our personal currency, the US dollar, will then fall with it as well. So the dollar won't become as powerful, and I'm sure you guys know from a lot of either economics classes or even history classes, once a certain currency goes down, this can lead to things like inflation and different things like that. Now I don't want to take the slippery slope argument and think that we're going to run into this 
this huge inflation issue, but I do think that because of a decrease that could happen in the dollar, even if it's just a little bit, this will increase inflation, which oftentimes has a lot of cons that are associated with inflation as well. So the decrease of the dollar is something that we can really expect from this mounting debt and how it can affect you personally. Right, so that will wrap it up. Those are seven different ways that the national debt that we have will affect you personally. Now, there's a ton more and I've studied this a lot. This is just kind of something that I'm really interested in. I'm really fascinated by the debt that the United States is in because it's so big, so hard to get your mind wrapped around $22 trillion that it's just, it's unfathomable and to me it's just fascinating, but at the same time it's very scary because I don't see a way out that is gonna be safe or anything like that and I don't think anyone else does either so it's a huge problem that doesn't get enough publicity you know it's something that a lot of people know about the issues that the United States have you see in the news and there's a lot of issues out there but this is one that I don't think enough people are paying attention to and I think needs to be looked at and dissected and I think more people have to be aware of it and I think now that you know seven ways that this can affect you I want you to go and spread this I want you to go talk to other people and share this and really just kind of just raise awareness of this huge issue and get people talking about it a little bit more that will wrap it up if you guys have any questions about this debt that the United States is in, feel free to ask me in the comments below. This is something that I'm really fascinated by. Or if you have any comments about the nation's debt or how you think we should just begin tackling this unbelievable, that's the only word I can use. It's just, I can't fathom that much debt. It is unbelievable. So any questions, let me know, or any comments you have. This is, as you guys know, something that I'm really fascinated by and something that I put a lot of energy and a lot of studying into. So just let me know what your guys' thoughts are. But that will wrap up this video. I really enjoyed making this kind of econ related video. I do a lot of personal finance stuff, but economics is a large part of my life. It is my major. It's what I I study every single day and it's just I dedicate a lot of time to this so if you guys want to see more economics videos like this one I would love to make more so let me know that in the comments below but I look forward to talking to you guys down there thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys learned something today and have an awesome rest of your day I've really enjoyed talking to you guys and let's just have a good week good day and let's just keep this on our mind and start thinking about it a little bit so thank you guys so much hope you have an awesome rest of your day I've said that five times already but you guys are awesome and as always my name is Calvin Rab, and I will see you soon bye guys